everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Lucy and in today's video I am sharing with you six highly underrated romantic books. So we've all heard about the hyped romantic books, right? All the ones on TikTok that everybody is reading. You've got your fourth wing, you've got your Akatar, you've got From Blood and Ash. Like we all know those, you know, iconic, very hyped stories, When the Moon Hatched, all those kind of huge romantic books that everybody seems to be reading and talking about. But over here on my channel, I read a lot of romantic from the very, very hyped ones to the ones that most people probably have never heard of and there isn't a lot of buzz going around about them. So I wanted to spotlight six books today that have been published over the years but are classified as romantic that I really think that if you haven't read these you should get on them quickly because they are very underhyped. Now some of these you might have heard of, some of these you might not have heard of but I'm hoping that in this video there is something here for everyone so no matter what kind of romantic reader you are hopefully you will find one of these books suitable for your tastes. As is customary with all my videos do grab yourself a warm beverage and let's crack on with the book recommendations. Okay so the first one I wanted to mention I feel like people might have heard of this book but I really don't think it has been hyped and I do think it deserves a little bit more hype because I really really enjoyed this I raced through it there was an addictive quality about this romantic book and it is a series as well and that is Nectar of the Wicked by Ella Fields so this is a fey like fairy romantic book the first in a series and this gorgeous edition was a fairy loot romantic box so in that sense, like yes, there has been some recognition of this book, the fact that it was chosen for a fairy loot box, but I do think like not enough has been spoken about, about how like crazy this book is in terms of like the twists and turns. It does give me Akatar vibes, but like I do think there's something slightly different about this. Like the author has tried to make it unique, make it different. So this book sets off with a girl who has no name and she doesn't know who she is. All she knows is that she is a changeling, so she is a fairy. She was swapped as a baby with a human child. So she's being raised by a human woman who is really cruel and awful to her. Like she is, treats her pretty awfully to be honest. And our main character's main goal is to find out her heritage, like find out who her family are, find a way to get into fairy so that she might trace her parents basically and find out her real name. That is until a fairy arrives and offers her a bargain. He basically says if she will marry him then he will take her to the fairy realms and assist her with the search of her parents. But when she gets to the fairy realms that's where this whole story really takes off. She is basically a prisoner. She has been lied to about who this fairy man is. Let's just say there are so many twists and turns in this. There's a lot between like different fairy courts and of course our main character eventually finds out who she is and realises that she is in a lot of danger being caught in fairy. So I really enjoyed this book. I read it very very quickly and I'm really desperate to read the second book as well. So I can't remember what that one's called but I do intend to read that at some point. I really enjoyed this book. I thought it was like very fast paced. It's not doing anything brand new in the genre, but I do think like for a very fun fairy romanticy, you can't go very far without looking at this. Do you know what I mean? So I do think this deserves a little bit more hype than it's probably got. And I do think people would enjoy it if they started reading it. It's also quite steamy. It's perfect fairy romanticy. And I really would recommend Nectar of the Wicked. Now the next book I have mentioned a few times on this channel, mainly just because I am thoroughly obsessed with this book. This is Slaying the Vampire Conqueror by Carissa Broadbent. Now this actually was part of... Now Carissa Broadbent is probably best known for her book The Serpent and the Wings of Night which is a vampire romantic series. And Carissa in this series that she's the best known for has really crafted this very like unique form of vampires like there are two kind of warring clans I guess and different species of vampires but in Slaying the Vampire Conqueror we are kind of in a different world I would say like it's not really connected in the same way to the Serpent and the Wings of Night series but it does use the same kind of like world building and general universe because one hallmark of this series is its pantheon of gods and goddesses as well and our main character in this book is pledged to be a servant of this goddess and in return she has her eyes removed like she can't see she wears a blindfold but in return for losing her sight she has all these incredible powers like she can kind of sense threads around her 
and she can walk in the world with having like incredible sense. So even though she's lost the ability to see, she can see so much more. And that makes her like this perfect assassin. She's kind of also like a nun. She's also part of like this religious order who are praying to this goddess who she serves. And at the same time, a vampire is sweeping through her nation, conquering the whole country, killing people, destroying lives and livelihoods. And the head of her order, commands her to track down this vampire conqueror and kill him. Of course, she infiltrates his like war band and she poses as this oracle who kind of can see the future and guides the vampire conqueror on his path to glory. But of course she is a double agent and she is trying to bring him down at the same time. But to do that, she has to get close to him. And I love these types of stories where the main character has to get close to someone in order to kill them perfection. But what we are left with is a incredible, incredible romantic book that is just so multi-layered and like so well crafted. The writing is superb. The romance is 10 out of 10. Trust me on this. Like you have probably read Serpent in the Wings of Night. Read this book. This is equally better. I would say probably better than Serpent of the Wings of Night. Like I really enjoy that series, but I think Carissa Broadbent's other books that she's written are better. Like this is one of them, as is a novella, which is called Six Scorched Roses, which I would also recommend. Both of these books are very underhyped and I think more people should be reading Slaying the Vampire Conqueror. Don't let the name make you think that this is like some run of the mill romanticy. This is much more than that, trust me on this. Now the next book is another one I've mentioned a few times on my channel because when I read it, I was honestly blown away. And it is of course, This Vicious Grace by Emily Theed. So this is kind of an unusual romanticy book in the sense that it is a bodyguard romance and it's kind of set on an island inspired by like an Italian island like it's very beautiful there are lemon trees lemon groves and it's a hot island like it's Italian essentially and it follows our main character who is something called a Finestra and her role is basically to save her island from these monsters that kind of come every few years there is a curse upon her island and she is basically their only salvation like she is kind of being touched by the goddess she's been chosen by the goddess to protect that island now in order to do this a lesser our main character the fenestra has to marry something called a fonte or a font and they are the ones with the power and Alessa's power is to channel that power in order to protect the island. So the quirk here is Alessa has managed to kill every font or fonte that she has married because her touch is deadly. She hasn't learned quite how to channel the power. She's instead redirecting it back on these poor men and killing them. So when the nation starts to turn against her, they're like, hang on, she's killing everyone. Like maybe the goddess didn't want this. She needs a bodyguard to protect her. And that's where Dante comes in and their relationship is so, so good. There is also a lot of like twists in this, like things that you wouldn't quite expect. The relationship between Dante and Alessa, you know, it has some kind of quirks to it as well. So I really would recommend this book. I thought it was fantastic. And the second book is already out. I think it's called This Cursed Light, which I do have somewhere and I need to read that as well. I'm the worst with reading series, basically. But I really do think this book's under hype. Like, I just haven't seen loads of love for it. And even though I think people are aware of it, I don't know if necessarily they are like picking it up, reading it and recommending it. So this is my duty in life to recommend this book to you guys and go and read it, see what you think. I would say it's kind of a light romanticy in the sense where romanticy isn't like the crux of the plot, but it is an essential part to it. Like it serves its purpose. So I really would recommend this Vicious Grace. Now the next book series I really would like to recommend is Fortuna Sworn by KJ Sutton. So I have recommended this on my channel again before, but basically it took me by surprise. Like this is on its surface, a stereotypical fae romance, but it's so much more than that. And it actually does fae in a way that I've not really read about them before. So this follows our main character, Fortuna, and she is living in like the modern day, like, you know, a normal world. And it's well acknowledged that the Fae exist. So when her brother goes missing, like she's presuming her brother is dead. 
She is doing everything she can to find him. And that includes making a bargain with a fairy prince, a fairy king, in order to take her down into fairy in order to find her brother. Because the fairy king or fairy prince, he has his own motive for wanting to bring her to fairy. And there is a curse that Fortuna has to kind of solve as well. But she goes down into fairy and she soon realizes that this is a very, very dangerous place to be. And this is quite dark romantically, I would say, in the sense of like, there's a lot of like, dark scenes there's a lot of scenes with a lot of kind of like brutal torture and stuff like that like it's it's quite heavy i would say but it does vary is like very true to how they are supposed to be in kind of folklore that they are very trickstery they are brutal they are ruthless like they aren't these like pretty fairies from like akatar you know they are quite tricksy and i really like that kind of display of them i thought the writing was brilliant so i really would recommend this series if you're into fairy romance and you want to try out a new one this is like a multiple book series as well i haven't read more than the first book i really enjoyed fortuna sworn and i'm keen to continue on with the series so i'm sure you've heard of this series but if not i really would recommend i don't think it's been overly hyped so here is a suggestion for you to try this one as well we are continuing with the fey theme because this is a dance with the fey prince and this is by elise cova now i will forever recommend elise cova i love her books specifically her married to magic series i talk about this series all the time like on this channel and i have no regrets because i just don't think it's been hyped enough so this is the second book in the series. The first book is A Deal with the Elf King, another really great romantic book. But I really did enjoy A Dance with the Fae Prince and I think like you could try any of these books in the series and you will enjoy them. The third book is called A Duel with the Vampire Lord. That was also really fun. And the fourth one is something about a siren. I can't remember what it is. Um, a duet with the siren, siren prince or something. Anyway. I haven't gotten to that i haven't gotten to the siren book yet but the first three in the series are really really excellent i think my favorite was a dance with the fey prince because it just had a different layer to it it felt like a lot more intricate of a story but the romanticity in all of these books like the romance so spectacular we're going to get what is promised in all of these books to be honest the romance is great but also there's enough of a plot there's enough of a story to really sink your teeth into and i don't think these have been overly hyped either so i really would recommend these covers romantic books specifically the married to magic series all of these books contain like a forced marriage or arranged marriage situation and personally i really love that trope like i like a marriage trope just because it forces the main characters together like the love interest and the main character together for the whole book and that's the makings of a great romantic book to me so yes you are welcome and finally, this is a book from many a year ago. I would say this is a very old school booktube. I really adore this author's work and I think you will too. So the author I really want to recommend who I think is underhyped is Rosamond Hodge. Now her book Cruel Beauty is a Beauty and the Beast retelling. It's kind of a world where the main character is determined to kill the beast who is this like demon called Ignifex. It's not your run of the mill Beauty and the Beast retelling. This is really kind of complex, like interesting magic system, quite dark, but with a really satisfying romance. What I will say is these books like aren't on the page steamy. This isn't kind of like adult romanticy it's definitely more in the ya vein i still absolutely love rosamond hodges books she also has a cruel beauty novella called gilded ashes this was amazing this is kind of like a i guess like a cinderella inspired kind of retelling i guess like this kind of a masked ball the love interest needs to find someone who's going to break the curse that has been put on him and that's kind of the basis for this story but i really love how in each of these books there is a fairy tale retelling so this kind of was born of that time when fairy tale retellings were like the thing i also particularly love rosamond hodge's other book called crimson bound now this is a red riding hood retelling i want to say i think it is i can't remember it's been a while ago since i read it Crimson Bound was by far, like, I adored that book. It was so, so good. So I would really recommend any of this author's books. I fell in love with them. I think they're really, like, well-written romanticy with really kind of unique themes. 
it's not going to be your kind of like steamy romanticy that some of these books in this video are but it is like really well written beautifully told romanticy and i really would recommend them if you want something that's not as steamy maybe a bit more clean in the romance department so guys that is it thank you so much for watching a reminder of my social channels i'm on instagram i'm on tiktok at book bell reads and don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you want more romanticy videos like this one thanks again and i'll see you soon bye